What's going on, church? It's Amir here again, and I have another devotional for you guys. I'm at this time. This is the fifth devotional uh, that we've done here. And so thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting uh, the church during this time as we've, again, transitioned everything online. And we're still praying about this thing. I hope that you're still praying about it as well uh, so this thing can end so that we can get back to a place where we can be together uh, once again um, as, as, as a fellowship and as a congregation, as a body of Christ, and as a family of believers. I miss you guys and uh, miss you guys a lot and I miss the times that we've been able to have together. And so let's continue to pray uh, for God to work in a powerful way so that we can get back to things. But uh, as we move forward here, one of the things that has continued to uh, circulate, a question uh, that has come to the surface of my attention is the, the question of why God is allowing the coronavirus to happen. Or even if you remove God from that, why is the coronavirus happening? This is a question that you hear on the news. I've heard this question in different podcasts and sermons, social media. Uh, this question has been brought up in conversations that I've had uh, with my family, conversations that I've had with friends, conversations that I've had with some of you. Uh, this question of why is this going on? Why is this happening? It's, it's being asked often. It's being asked frequently. Because I think this is who we as people are. We want to know the reason behind things. We want to know explanations behind things. And this question is being asked because we want to know why uh, or what we did to deserve it. We want to know what we could have done to avoid it. We like to know these reasons and behind uh, reasons behind things and explanations behind things. And I believe it's in our nature uh, to entertain and understand uh, why something is going on. So we're asking researchers, we're asking doctors, we're asking other medical professionals, we're asking everybody that we could possibly ask. And I believe as Christians, this asking of why, that translates into our relationship with God. Where we tend to ask God why this thing is happening. We say, God, why are you doing this to me? You know, God, why haven't you stopped this thing yet? God, why have you allowed this thing to escalate so far? You know, God, why have so many people been affected by this thing? We like reasons. We like explanations. And I think we like those things because reasons and explanations and understanding why something is going on, that helps us to get through whatever it is that we're trying and attempting to get through. When we understand why something is happening, it helps us to get over what we need to get over in life, whether that's a crisis like we're in right now or other types of troubles. Uh, but one thing that I found that I think it would do us some good and much good and offer us some relief even, is before we ask the why question, I believe it may be more important to ask the what question. That is, instead of asking God, why are you allowing this to happen? It's God, what are you doing with this? God, what are you showing me with this? God, what are you bringing to my attention? All right, it's happening, it's going on, coronavirus has shown up, it's here, and it's still here. And so I believe it's important for us to to understand what, obviously, God has to be trying to show us something through this, uh, since the coronavirus is still here and affecting us. And sure, again, there may be a reason for it. Sure, there may be an explanation for it. Sure, it could have been avoided. Sure, things may not have uh, escalated as far as they have if we knew the reason why, so we could stop and contain this thing um, better. I don't know, but, 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 but I know that God is more concerned, I believe, uh, with getting us to see what he wants us to see before he is concerned with explaining why things are going on in our lives. And this reminds me of a passage of scripture in Luke 13. All right, Luke 13 and verse number one, you can turn there if you would like to, but I'm gonna go ahead and read. And so uh, you can listen as I read it here. So Luke 13 verse one, the Bible says, there was some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. You know, so two things happen here in this text, two tragedies. Uh, two disasters, two heinous things. That's some Galileans died, Pilate had killed and mixed their blood with some sacrifices that he was making. And, 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 and 18 people in Siloam died when this tower fell on them and crushed them. 
And I'm sure the people during this time wanted Jesus to answer the why it happened question. The why did these people die? The why, Jesus, didn't you stop this from happening? Tell, and, and again, it's like, tell us why this happened, Jesus, so that the same thing doesn't happen to us. And there could have been a why to these things happening. There could have been a reason. There could have been an explanation. But that's not what Jesus gives them in this passage. Instead, Jesus, he gives them a revelation. Right? Instead, he, he shows them something that they should walk away with knowing. He gives them a what? That is, a what these things should show you is that you need to repent. And so let's get past asking why this happened. Let's get past asking, you know, why this happened to these people so we don't do the same things these people did. But let's see what this event and this tragedy is showing us. This is what Jesus is trying to get these people to see. That is, you need to repent. You need to change. You need to adjust your lifestyle in the way that you're living. Use this as an opportunity to promote some change in your lives. And from this, I don't think it's a stretch to infer that God has a message that he is attempting to reveal to us in all such disasters. That is, whenever or wherever a crisis is, God is always attempting to show us something. And that's something like here in Luke 13 is something that will help us. It's something that can heal us. And it's something that will give us peace. So again, whenever or wherever a crisis is happening, God is always attempting to show us something. And when it comes to this coronavirus, I believe that God is attempting to show us the same thing that he was trying to show to Paul. And and eventually Paul got in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 8. We'll read verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction that we experienced in Asia. And so for Paul, this is something that happened in his past. He says experienced. That means it's over. It happened. So Paul was going through something where he was in Asia, and we're going through something where we're at today. All right, Paul was afflicted by something, and we're being afflicted today. All right, and it should do us some good to to see and to read that, hey, the affliction was experienced. It's not still being experienced. And so that means it's over. It's past tense. It's in the past. It's in the background. All right. And so this this tragedy, this disaster we're going through, it has the same potential to be in the background and to be in our past, just like Paul's tragedy and disaster had. All right. And so Paul, he writes here as he continues, uh, for we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. And so things were very stressful for Paul. He writes, hey, we felt like we were about to die when we were going through what we were going through. So he was stressed out and and, and things can be stressful for us during this time. Things were chaotic for Paul. Things can be chaotic for us. Things were unsure for Paul. Things were up in the air for Paul. And the same thing is true in our lives during this time. Things are unsure and up in the air. But Paul writes that God was allowing all that to happen to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. And so Paul says, hey, we didn't get the reason for it. We didn't get the explanation for it. And I'm sure that there were times that Paul and some of these other believers were asking God why this was going on. And sure, there could have been an explanation. Sure, there could have been a reason. But to God, we can see here from this passage that he was far less into giving a reason than he was in showing them what he wanted to show them. And that is nothing in this world, right, can give you, Paul, and the believers in Asia, the security and satisfaction like God who raises people from the dead can. And I believe that during our time, this coronavirus, God is showing us the same thing, that nothing again in, in this world or nothing in this life will ever give us the sense of security and the sense of satisfaction that the Lord God can give to us. And this disease, it's shown us a lot of things. It's shown us how unreliable and unstable, putting our security, putting our hope, and putting our trust in anything else other than God can be. That's security in the economy. It's shown us, hey, that's unreliable. Security in finances. This time it's shown us that that's unreliable and things going according 
to our plans and the way that we want them to go. And I, I mean, most of the things that we contend to rely upon in this life, other than God, have been shut down by this virus. And like the words we sing in the worship song, this virus has shown us that all other ground outside of God is what is referred to as sinking sand. You can't stand in it. You can't trust it. You can't put your hope in it. And so amongst other things, I believe that the times we're in right now are doing much to encourage us to make God the all important and all pervasive reality in our lives. As God is the only reality that we can fully and confidently rely upon. And the only thing that keeps things intact is the hand of God. The only thing that keeps things together is the hand of God. And the only thing that keeps things good is the hand of God. For most of us, this time has been showing us that maybe our security has been put in the wrong things. Right? If, if, if we've been troubled with, with the financial uncertainty of this time or the economic uncertainty of this time or, 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 or anything else, it's showing us, hey, our security may be invested in the wrong place, in a place that's actually sinking sand. Maybe it's gotten us far and up to a certain point in our life. But this time is showing us that this disease, <laughs> if a disease can shut down, things that we can put our reliance on. It's not a good idea to put our reliance on those things. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 55 and verse 22, it says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Here the Bible is telling us it's the Lord who sustains us. It's not the face-to-face -face interactions that we once had. It's not the freedom of of movement that we once had. It's, it's not the business activity that we once had. It's not how life used to be. That's not the things that will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Sure, some of those things are great. Sure, some of those things are awesome. Sure, some of those things are nice to have. But again, if it just takes a virus for those things to be shut down, then I don't know about you, but I do not want to put my security, my hope, and my trust in any of those things. I want my hope in something solid. I want my security in something that I can rely upon in times when there's a virus and when there's times where there's no virus. I want my security in something that's gonna sustain me. And this pandemic is showing us that the hand of God is what is reliable when the economy is not. The hand of God is still reliable when business activity is not. The hand of God is still reliable when life as normal is not. And so what is God revealing to us at this time? And that's the question that we got to consider. And this is the question that's going to help us out and help give us peace of mind during this time. And I believe amongst other things that God is showing us that nothing in this life will ever provide us with the security and satisfaction that is to be found in God, that is to be found in Jesus, that is to be found in his spirit and in his word. And so, amen, church, with that, that's this week's devotional. Let's continue to pray and let's continue to invest our hope, our trust, and our security, and our reliance on something that we can truly rely upon. That is the hand of God. And so, amen, church, thank you for letting me share.